warm days, there's nothing nicer than a salad from the garden. Pea shoots, radishes, salad onions, perhaps some spinach, and of course, lettuce in all its fabulous forms. This is my salad bed, and I have to say, I'm pretty pleased with the way it's coming along. There's already lots to enjoy. This is the traditional way to grow salads, but you don't have to dedicate a whole bed to salads. There is another way, a space-saving salad tower. Growing vertically is the smart move when space is tight. There are plenty of ways to do it, using for example pots attached to fences, stacked planters or even purpose-sold vertical growing tubes. But a homemade salad tower is a cost-effective solution. It's fun to make and should give something to pick within a few short weeks. Here's how to make one. To make my salad tower, I've got some stock fencing or flexible cattle panel left over from making the vegetable arch behind me. You could use chicken wire or anything that can be flexed into a cylinder. Just make sure that the holes are big enough that you can plant into them. To hold it all together, I've got some flexible wire, but you could use zip ties. And then to line it, some old food grade polythene. Then of course, there's the peat-free potting mix to fill it and the salad plants themselves. Cut and come again salad leaves like these lettuces are perfect for growing in a salad tower because you can pick just what you need on each occasion so they will look great for longer. These lettuces were sown from seed and grown on in plug trays. They're quite far on already so I shouldn't have long to wait until the first harvests. Let's begin making the tower. Start by cutting the fencing to size. We don't want it so tall that the potting mix slumps, and we want water to be able to trickle down to the plants lower down. I'm making this tower about 2 foot or 60 centimetres high, with a diameter of around 18 inches or 45 centimetres. It's a good idea to leave a little extra fencing to cut and fashion into a base for the tower, which will make it easier to move around. Once it's cut to size, firmly secure the ends together using the wire. Now to line the tower. Cut the plastic to size, then feed it in, pushing it down and into the corners and sides. Once in place, cut several holes or slits into the bottom for drainage. Wet the potting mix before filling the tower. This helps to give a more even, solid fill and will make it easier to keep plants watered going forward. Fill the tower right to the top with the moistened mix. Super stuff! Right, let's get planting, but first off, let's tidy up the top here by trimming off the excess plastic from around the rim. And now to create the planting holes, and we do that by simply cutting an X-shaped slip wherever we want to plant. Then all we need to do to plant it is to carefully remove the lettuce from its plug and then ease it through the slit and into the potting mix. Take your time making sure that the root ball is in good contact with the potting mix. Continue around the tower, planting every 4 to 6 inches, that's 10 to 15 centimetres, in both directions. Finish with some salads on the top, or you could add a few flowers for colour. Water gently and steadily, so the water trickles right down to the bottom, and water often to maintain consistent and even moisture throughout the tower. If you live in a hot climate, position your salad tower in the cool of the shade, so it will last for longer. It's a good idea to start more plants in plugs after a few weeks, so they're ready to replace the first lot once they're finished. If you don't fancy all the steps, remember you can make a really simple salad tower from burlap or hessian sacks, or just by turning old potting soil or compost bags inside out so the black side faces out and then planting into the sides of these. And here's the salad tower just two weeks on, and it's not looking too bad, is it? Whenever I want any salad leaves, I just pick off or cut individual leaves from the outside of each plant and then leave the central leaves to grow on. 
I hope you've enjoyed this simple project and attempted to give it a go. Let us know how you get on, or if you have any questions, just pop them in the comments section below and I will do what I can to answer them. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future projects. I'll catch you next time. Bye.